Our starting point is a tight-knit community on the Yorkshire coast whose relative isolation made it a bit different from your usual fishing village. This is Robin Hood's Bay, a cascade of cottages and narrow lanes carved into a cliff. It's the prettiest kind of place to visit, but don't let its innocent facade fool you. For over a hundred years, smuggling was the unofficial town trade. From the early 1700s, contraband regularly arrived here from all over Europe. Because of its location, Robin Hood's Bay could have been custom designed for illegal imports. It was one of the few safe havens on the east coast, a broad bay protected by massive headlands and backed by inaccessible moorland. And the cliffs made perfect lookouts for the smugglers. From here, they could signal to their accomplices out at sea. And at the same time, watch out for the revenue men. Smuggling was at its peak in the 1700s, when the government slapped hefty import duties on luxury goods like silk, tobacco and tea to pay for its almost constant wars with France. Local knowledge gave the smugglers access to a labyrinth of secret routes. Under cover of darkness, they could creep up the beach with their booty and disappear into this tunnel. They ventured into drainage tunnels like these at enormous risk. Smuggling carried the death sentence, but the rewards were worth the risks. Bringing in just a pound of tea would have netted a smuggler the equivalent of a week's wages. At one point, 80% of all the tea drunk in Britain was imported illegally. The smugglers turned this tunnel to their advantage. I'm looking for holes in the ceiling above my head. I, look at this. They could creep up here. You could imagine them stuffing rum, tobacco up through here into the house above. Very ingenious. It wasn't just the men who struggled through tunnels like this that made money out of smuggling. Pretty much everybody in the village had their hands dirty. The boatmen, the storer, even the local squire who lived here at Thorpe Hall. He financed the smuggling and would, of course, have expected a good return on his investment. Here in the grounds of the squire's house is an underground chamber where he stashed his share of the booty. Look at that. It's carefully lined in stone. You can imagine it packed with gin, tobacco, brandy and bolts of silk. By 1815, at the end of the Napoleonic Wars, soldiers were redeployed as excise men, putting a stop to large-scale smuggling. But not entirely. Today, customs and excise reckon nearly four billion pounds worth of revenue is lost every year to illegal imports of tobacco and alcohol, 